your Bibles, would you turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and I'm just aware that I need the Lord's help this morning to say what He wants me to say, and I pray for grace on all of us to hear what I'm what I am saying, not what I'm not saying. Amen. This really be, uh, began to be stirred in my heart last Sunday. I believe the Lord has something for us. I want to pick up reading in Mark chapter 5 and verse 21. It says, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Jairus' name means to be enlightened by God. Anybody who has been enlightened by God or received revelation from God is always going to end up where he ended up, at the feet of Jesus. Any new revelation, any, any revelation that comes from the Scriptures, it always should land us at that place, at the feet of Jesus. Verse 23, he says, And Jairus besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray you come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she may live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Now Jairus here is in a very desperate situation. This is not a game. This is not a light thing. That He needs Jesus and, and he don't have time to waste. And by the time you get to the fifth chapter of Mark, Jesus is on the move. All the way through Mark's gospel, He's displaying Christ as a servant. He's displaying Him as a man who can get the job done. He's not just some religious man that sits around drinking coffee and, and spreading his theology all day. He's a man on the move. He's already been and delivered the demoniac in the first part of the chapter. And now as He's coming, here comes Jairus and say, I need you to come to my house now. And Jesus goes with him, but while he's there, all of these people throng him. We're going to skip over some of this today for the sake of time, but I just want you to know Jesus is able to do multiple things at once. Amen? Sometimes in our life we can be just so focused that God, I need you to do this and I need you to do it right now. And when we don't see it, we can be overcome with discouragement. We can be be overcome with this depression, but little do we know, while maybe he wasn't doing what I asked him to do, he was doing a lot of other things in my life. I was just too blind to see it. So skip down with me if you if you would to verse 35. Mark 5 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. So important, church, that you be in tune to the voice of the Lord. Because you never know when bad news is going to come to you. And if we're not walking in the Spirit and we're not following the shepherd, that's all we'll ever hear. Is bad. We would have never heard that voice right there. He's just been wrecked, man. She didn't make it. She's dead. Don't, don't, bring, don't, don't trouble the, the Master to come with you anymore. But I'm glad there's another voice. Amen. I'm, I'm glad for the voice of the Good Shepherd who says, Be not afraid, only believe. Verse 37, he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he saw their tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he came in, he said unto them, 
Why do you make all this ado and weep? For the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he put them all out, everybody say, put them all out. out. When he put them all out, he took the mother and the father of the damsel and them that were with him and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto you, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and he commanded that something should be given her to eat. I want to preach a message today, got a little different title, Close the Door. Close the door. Will you pray with me and pray for me? Father, we ask today for your anointing on the reading, preaching, and hearing of the Word of God. Lord, give us spiritual eyes that do see and ears that do hear. And God, give us a heart that will receive this Word today on good soil and let it bear the fruit that glorifies God. Lord, give us the grace today, Lord, know to know when to open doors And to know when to close doors. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Last Sunday morning, we had to close those doors there in the back to help with the air conditioning. Because we, we had it turned down on, I think John Swindle put it on about 65, and it was about 74 in here. And all the heat that comes out of those windows in the front, someone had the idea, let's close the door. Keep the heat out there and the cool air that's in here. And I believe in that as I was praying for the all, in the altar and God was ministering to me, He said to me, son, for a season, I want you to close the door. And I've always prayed for open doors. It's what I've asked God for since I can remember asking. Lord, I'm I'm asking you for open doors. I love the promise. Jesus said, I will open up a door for you that to know that no man will be able to shut. We love open doors because we want to go and we want to reach in the world. We want to preach the gospel and we want to tell everybody that can hear. But there are seasons, y'all, that you have to close the door. There are times when Jesus had to close that door. They're on that way to raise this little girl for the dead and He knows not everybody that's with me is going to be a part of that. It doesn't mean that He don't love them or that He don't want them. He walked into that house and they had professional mourners there. These people that just get paid to come into a bad situation and cry. Let me tell you, coming and crying, that don't help anybody. It it don't. Anybody can show up and die diagnose how bad the situation is, but only Jesus was able to walk into that house and say, little girl, get up out of that bed. You, we got to be careful that we don't plan a funeral when God wants a resurrection. That's what God... So, amen. <laughs> Close the door for a private meeting with Jesus. Jesus had many of those private meetings with His disciples. He'd say things that people didn't understand and then those disciples would come away with Him and they would, uh, he would, they would ask Him, Master, what does this mean? And He would sit them down and begin to teach them. Not everybody needs to know what goes on behind closed doors because some people will only add to the problem if they know. Others will take what they hear and spread it to people who have no business knowing what's going on there behind closed doors. It's important, y'all, that we realize that not to give us a victim mentality, but the Bible says we don't need to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Some people want us to fail. 
Some people, I, I just see this all the time, there are religious spirits that won't lift a finger to help anybody, but they, they secretly want you to fail so that they can say, I told you it wasn't real. I told you it wasn't God. I told you that it wasn't going to work. And all that does is just pour logs on the fire that burns on the inside of me. It is going to work. God is with us. And God is going to get His glory out of the ministry that takes place here. So you have to know some people want you to fail. you got to realize, y'all, that the testimony of Jesus is tied to your life. That there might be, there may not be people, you know, just running up to you and patting you on the back and and congratulating you. But if you're here and you're following Christ and you you you've expressed that, then people are watching your life. And there are people that are out in the world. Some do want you to fail, but others are looking and wondering if it is real and if it's real for you. Is there hope for them? So it's important that you walk in a consecrated way, uh, devoted wholeheartedly to the Lord Jesus Christ because His testimony is connected to yours. It's connected to your marriage. It's connected to your children not falling into the ways of the world. It's connected to the church here because we are many members, but we're part of one body. Some example of closed doors. Sometimes there's family meetings, also known as come to Jesus meetings. Anybody know about that? And it's when issues really have to be dealt with. We've watched it, we've observed it, we've had our belly full of it, we're not going to take it anymore, and we're going to put our, we're going to put our foot down. So we call a meeting and we close the door behind us and we put it all out there on the table. Things that might have been bottled up in you for a long time, but I can't hold it any longer. Somebody's action, somebody's ways, somebody's decision is pulling the whole thing down. So now in this family meeting with the door closed, Let me tell you something, I love my family. There are sometimes I get upset at my family, but at the end of the day, they are still my family. And, and in family, we need, to, we need to get to the maturity. We need, we need to get uh, responsible enough to where when hard truths are spoken, we don't just fall apart and, and, and break like a cracked egg. Thank God somebody loves you enough to tell you the truth about your life. And when they come to you with the spirit of grace and the spirit of humility, they're not trying to get rid of you. They are trying to help you. And you've got two choices. You You can heed the counsel of wisdom or you can harden your heart like a fool. And if you do that, it's not just you that's going to sink, but you will pull the rest of the family down with you. Listen to me. Hard truths have to be spoken sometimes. And we've got to get to the place where we can accept and receive criticism. There there are some people, that's all they got to say is negative and bad things. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that loves you enough that they see what's going on in your life and the direction that you're... Just stop for a moment, everybody. Think about the current condition of your life. Are you closer to the Lord this morning than you were six months ago? Is there more joy in your life today than it was six months ago? Do you feel freedom? Do you feel closer to the Lord? Do you feel like you're closer to where God wants you to be right now than you were six months ago? And if the answer is yes, then praise God. But if the answer answer is no, then here's the second question. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Just sitting there doing nothing. Just sitting there going through the motions. You're going to end up drifting further and further and further away out into that darkness and and not knowing how to get back. We've got to get to the place where I can receive correction. Uh, That's one of the jobs of a real minister of Jesus Christ. Not to fluff pillows and pat people on the back and see what kind of offering we can get. I'm here that by the grace of God we might get a people ready for the rapture of the church. And if we're not in line, then we need to get in line. If we're not saved, then we need to get saved. So there's family meetings. If I'm going to experience Jesus... 
when He affirms and comforts me. I also have to experience Jesus when He confronts me and when He convicts me. I'm just going to drink water on that right there. <laughs> you tell you had a church already when your voice is gone by the time you get up to preach. Amen. Amen. You just have to forgive me. I've been walking after out of graves and writing messages and stomping the devil with my shoes this morning. You have to hear the Word of God. Come to church with a heart to hear the Word of God. Come to church with your heart prepared. You know, each one of us have to. Think about how much just gets wasted. We've all heard enough gospel to save a nation, but what have we done with it? It's the posture of your heart. There's also closed doors in the bedroom where intimacy takes place. And I'm not trying to be vulgar this morning, but I'm talking about intimacy with Jesus. And that, that's why a lot of people can't experience joy and peace and experience the love of God in their life. It's because they're not intimate with Him. Jesus said there are people that praise Him with their mouth, but their heart is far away from Him. It costs nothing to come and to sing and to clap and to talk about Jesus. But the reality that you love Jesus is not left at church on a Sunday morning. It goes home with you. And He deals with you and, and you serve Him. Jesus said in John fifteen fourteen, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you really love somebody, if I really love this woman, I'm not going to set out to hurt her. I want to make her happy. I want to make her proud. I want this woman to be proud that she chose me to be her husband. You know what? I want my life to glorify Jesus because I love Him. Where there's intimacy with Jesus, y'all, we've got to close the door to all the distractions. Everything that tries to pull us, pull us around. There, there are so many times when I feel like I can't even pray and I can't hear the voice of God because I'm too distracted with the voices and with the problems of other people. There's so many times that we have a hard time discerning what does God want me to do in this situation and in this season because we're pulled in a hundred different directions by people. I believe one of the greatest devices of the enemy in our time is to get it to, to make us a people that are just lulled into some stupor, some stupor by entertainment, by social media, by television, by music. It can even by be by friends and by the busyness of life that you simply don't have time to be with God. Your relationship with Jesus is like your a lot like your relationship with your spouse. Man, if you don't talk, if you don't spend time with each other, if you don't have time to listen, if you don't care enough to just stop sometimes and listen to what, what does she feel? What is she going through? Then that thing's going to start moving further and further and further apart. A lot of Christians are just like that. You only talk to God when your back is against the wall and you don't have any other options. And He has rescued you time and time and time and time again. What about when you get back up on the mountain? Be with Him there. Just talk to Him when you get in trouble. But close the door and get into the presence of Jesus. There's closed doors in the delivery room. Not everybody gets to go back there to the delivery room. Most of the time, it's just the mama and the daddy and that baby that's about to be born into the world. That delivery room, and again, I'm not trying to be vulgar. But it's the result of intimacy between a man and his wife. 
We wonder why we're spiritually barren. We wonder why we don't lead souls to Christ. We wonder why we don't have a word. We wonder why we don't worship. We wonder where our joy went. We wonder where... Man, where did the tears I used to weep? Where did the presence of Jesus that used to meet me in the morning where I couldn't wait to be with Him? I can tell you why you're barren. It's because you've not been intimate with Him. And I can tell you, y'all, there is so much that Jesus wants to birth in us and through us in this church and in this community, but there's got to be a closeness to Him. And sometimes you've got to close the door. And uh, just like when Jesus went to Jairus' house, not everybody's going. There are people that will laugh at that. There are people here this morning that what I just said don't make a lick of sense to you. And it's because you've not been with the Master. You might know about Him and you might be able to talk about Him. But you've not been with Him. It's closed up with Jesus. That's where, that's where real ministry comes from. Not where you got to work up something to say, try to force yourself to do it, but man, you just ain't able to keep a lid on it because you've been with Him and He has filled your spirit to overflow. And you, oh, you just give me, let me get a word in edgeways. I'm going to testify and to tell you of the things that God has done. That's when you're joyful. The whole world might be falling out uh, around you, but I just left the presence of the King and He told me everything is going to be all right. Everything. I remember I went through a spell, man. I couldn't have got a job if I'd offered to work for free. <laughs> now, and I, when I saw it at the time, it looked like a bad thing. But I look back and I know what Jesus did. He cut a lot of strings off of my life to put me in the one place I was too busy to be before. In my house with the door closed and the lights off and my face in the carpet. What do you want from me, Jesus? What do you have for me? And it was in that place Jesus began to speak to me about planting, starting a church right here. Man, I'm scared to death. For months I just sat on the floor and I prayed. and I can remember just sitting before plates of food, food that I really like to eat, but I ain't hungry. God's caught me. And I couldn't get away from it. Man, I'm scared to death, but every time I just get into the presence of the Lord, I've already told you that Scripture, Exodus 33, we've got it on the door. I said, Lord, I know in the beginning it'll be exciting, it'll be fresh, it'll be new, but when the new wears off, the going will get tough. I know that there'll be times I'll be lonely, I'll be dry, and it'll be hard. And I pray just like John prayed in the back this morning. I don't want to be some firework. Pow! in the sparkle... But you can't even find a trace of it after that. I don't, Lord. I want to burn hot and I want to burn long. And I just want what you have for me. Jesus said to me, Son, my presence will go with you. And I will surely give you rest. Another time I knew, I knew that there would be people that would try to come here and take over. And just try to force their will on me. Try to, try to make this church what they wanted it to be. And I was afraid of that. God, because I don't like confrontation. I really don't. I don't want to be ugly to anybody. Man, I want to have a good time when we come to church. I want to worship the Lord. And that's what I want to do. But I know part of being a shepherd, part of being a pastor, is knowing who has to go and who needs to stay. Jesus told me it's just like when Moses came off the mountain with those Ten Commandments and they're worshiping those golden calves at the base of Mount Sinai. And Moses spoke up and said, Who's on the Lord's side? And the Levites stepped out of the multitude and said, Us, we're on the Lord's side. And God, and Moses said, Take your sword and slay the idolaters at the base of that mountain. That if you're not willing to go on with God and you want to stay there worshiping those golden calves, golden calves, then you're not going to be able to come on with us because if we let you stay, you will pervert and corrupt the whole nation of the people of God. 
that Levite redeemed himself that day and they were the people who had no inheritance in this world but they, they spent days and nights uh, one, one, one uh, shift after another in the temple offering up lambs, offering up goats, offering up sacrifices in the presence of God. That's what a Levite was. And God said to me, the sword of the Lord... In the hand of a Levite, that's a man of the sacrifice and of the altar, will drive the idolaters out of the camp every time. And I've seen it. That's the way it is, y'all. Everybody's welcome, but not everybody's going to be able to stay. Because it can't be an anything goes type of a thing. We've got to stay in line with the Word of God. We've got to continue to lift up Jesus. And I can tell you what, I want to make it to the delivery room. I want to make it fair. I, I want to make it, man, I can remember being scared to death on the first one. But man, they, they pulled that little boy out of his mama and put him right in my arms. And man, I have never in my life felt a feeling like I felt that day. You know, I don't, I'm scared to death and I don't even know how to change your diaper. But I swear to you, I will give my life to you for the rest of my life. I'll be here for you. I will fight for you. And you will always always be mine. Oh, imagine how God looks at His children, Sister Rachel. If I can love a boy like that, how can God love, how much more will God love His sons and daughters born of the Spirit to do His will, to worship the Lamb all the days of their life? I heard some time back that a lot of preachers die with a dead baby hanging out of them. Because they didn't have enough help to deliver it. Y'all, let's don't be that. There's a scripture, I meant to find it this morning, but the Bible says that when it was time for babies to be born, the people of God didn't have enough strength to, to push them out, to, put, to bring them forth. This is the time, y'all, for babies to be born. You just think, just like that youth camp that we just had, I know that God put that on the inside of me. I know that He did. And, and it, oh, there was travail, there was trouble. <laughs> there was a temptation, man, just to abort this because it's so hard. Oh, but there was the call of the Lord. Just hold on. Just stick with me. Keep travailing. Keep believing. And look, the result of it was life. The result of it was new life. Pete testified of it this morning. You know what the enemy wants to do with new life? Kill it. Got to hide Moses and then put him in the bushes till he gets strong enough to be able to live. Got to run to Egypt with Jesus because Herod wants to kill the, the, the little boy. He, the enemy fears life. He hates it. The enemy hates these young people that are growing up and setting their face towards God and wanting to be different, want to serve Him, want to get into the altar and pray and to share the Word of God and to lead worship and do something real in their generation. The enemy hates it every time. Man, we ought to be having a resurrection and a, and a celebration. But the enemy wants us to have a funeral. If you've ever gone to surgery, there's closed doors in the surgery room. Only the skilled and the qualified are allowed to go, the, go into that room. It's a sanitized environment to prevent the infection and the disease from, from spreading. It's a, it's a prepared room. And the surgeon's agenda is to fix the problem. Right? You've gone in there because you've got trouble. He wants to fix the problem, repair the damage, to remove the cancer so that the body can heal. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit is like a surgeon. And there's too many Christians that are walking around with cancers, just things that are weighing them down. And it's been there for years. Because they won't go into that room with Him and close the door. You have to be honest with God. 
If you want Him to do anything in your life, you've got... And that's the reason for the closed door. You don't have to tell me everything that goes on with you. I don't want to know. You've got to be careful who else you tell what's going on with you because they don't need to know. But you can take it to Jesus. You can take it to Jesus and say, Lord, I need surgery. I'm tired of being like this. How many of you are tired maybe in your Christian walk of just feeling like you were getting so close, so close to the breakthrough, so close to the revival, so close to the freedom that you've been asking for and praying for, and it seems like just before you get your hands on it, it just vanishes, it's gone. And we've got a tendency that we want to blame other people. We want to blame, they're, they're the problem. When in reality, we just need to go in and close the door. Say, Jesus, I want you to search me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. David prayed, search me, O Lord, and prove me. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. I can tell you that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a prayer that God will always answer. Wounds have got to be healed. Otherwise, they become infected and they're, they're going to spread. While we're talking about closed doors and private meetings and hard things being said, you've got to be able to receive, we've got to be able to give it, and you've got to be able to receive it in the right spirit. Because when you get offended, I saw this this week, it's so true. The spirit of offense will have you hearing things that weren't said. The spirit of offense will have you thinking everything is about you, that it was directed towards you, and now you're not able to hear what God wants you to hear. Beware the the, the spirit of offense. Let your wounds be healed. Bring them to Jesus. Lord, work in my life. Otherwise, they become infected. I I just believe that's where the enemy looks for. He looks for wounds. you got no idea how many preachers that started out loving Jesus and loving people, but because they got stabbed in the back a few times and they've got wounded, now they've got that spirit of Saul on them and they throw javelins at people that were sent to help them and they never bring life. It's always death. Because it's offended and they preach mad. If you think I'm preaching mad this morning, I promise you I'm not. I just want you to get this. Because I'm tired of feeling like I'm getting so close. Then we end up getting robbed. Wounds got to be healed. I can't tell you how many times I've just had to go to the presence of the Lord and say, God, I don't know how much more of this I can take. He brings healing to my life. I mean, my wife just prayed right here in this altar. For, for most of our marriage, we've been in ministry. And I just rejoice in the Lord this morning that we're not mad. We're not bitter. We haven't sacrificed our children in the name of ministry. But we've got joy. Our home is a happy place to be, and I know that God did that. But I can tell you along the way, there's been a lot of wounds that had to be healed. Some infections, when they get into your body, your body actually begins to attack itself. And your body thinks it's fighting off a disease, but it's actually fighting something that you you really need. They should both be in the same fight. And if we're not careful, if we don't let our wounds get healed... We'll be fighting each other instead of the real enemy that's out there. Jesus, when He went to Jairus' house, the Bible said He ran all of them folks out of there. That's all they wanted to do. And when Jesus showed up with a true word of faith, don't be afraid, only believe. That girl ain't dead, she's only asleep. 
The Bible says they laughed Him to scorn. They went from wailing tears to laughing in, at Jesus in one breath. This is why you've got to shut the door. The Bible says Jesus ran them. Get that mess out of here. Get your laughing. Get your mocking. Get your scorning. Get your unbelief and hit the road. Because not, we're not fixing to bury this girl. We're not fixing to bury this young generation. But we're going to see Jesus raise them again to new life. Hell would have you lay down and quit. Hell would have you give up and and shut the doors on the church. But Jesus says, "I'm, I'm coming here for resurrection. I'm coming here for revival. There's another story in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible says that a widow woman came to the prophet Elisha. And she says, I need help, man of God. Because the creditor has come... And he wants to take my two sons and make them bondsmen. The the creditor is the the debt collector. And bondsman means slave. She don't have any money to pay this creditor for her sons or to pay her debt, whatever it is that she has borrowed. So the creditor comes and says, I'll take your two boys instead. I believe that is the agenda of the enemy, that if he can't take you, he'll try to take your children. Or whatever it is that you feel like you're doing a service for God, he wants to make you pay for it on the backside of it. But Elisha, his name means, my God is salvation. My God is the Savior. I believe Elisha in this picture, in this story, is a type of Jesus Christ. That's where this woman ran to. That creditor's come. I'm not calling the debt help hotline. I'm not going to the bank to try to beg them for a loan. I only know one place. Folks, there are times in your life when you can only go one place with your problem, and that is to the feet of Jesus. Jesus, I need your help. I know that you can make a way for me. That prophet says, what have you got? in the house you got nothing just a little oil <laughs> it's all I've got left is just a little bit of oil what is the oil it's a picture of the Holy Spirit man I may not feel him just breaking out with goose but I feel a little something now I feel a little something churning on the inside of me I've got just enough faith to believe that if I can get to the feet of Jesus he, he's got an answer for me Go get a bunch of empty vessels. They can be empty because they don't have anything left to give. They can be empty because they've poured out everything that they've had. I was just thinking about it this week. You know how to try to find the true bride of Jesus? When Abraham was looking for a bride for Isaac, his son... He sent his best servant, Eliezer, out to go find one. And Eliezer, he prays and he's looking for this girl that is going to be a servant. And he says, Father, let her just come water these camels without me even have to ask her to. Because that, that's the true bride that they were looking for. And this... They, this this man and his team come with all these thirsty camels and they end up there and this little old young, beautiful young lady runs out there and says, let me get water for you and while you drink it, I'll get water for your camels also. And all day she's filling up that bucket, running back to them men, running back to them camels. That's how we'll be the true bride of Christ in the earth. It doesn't matter if you've got a microphone. It doesn't matter if you've got a stage or a platform. But you'll be serving this lost, broken, thirsty world in the name of Jesus. That's what God's looking for in this hour. Just empty vessels. Empty vessels. Somebody that's not full of pride, not full of self, not full of religion, not full of ambition to make a name for themselves. Why are you empty? Because I poured it all out. And I got nothing left left to give. Let me tell you, empty can be a good place for you to be because now you're a candidate to be used behind closed doors. That widow, that widow woman, she went, she sent them boys, they barred up every kind of vessel that they could get. 
And the Bible says that she went into the house, shut the door behind them. Why would you shut the door? Because she's already seen the one, the only, the one and only person she needed to talk to, Elisha, the man of God. And I don't believe in this instance that he's some kind of a superhero preacher. I believe that he is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, just running in there, telling him your trouble. And the Bible says they started pouring oil. And that little old jar of oil, she's, she's pouring it in there, fills that vessel to the brim. Man, I ain't got much, but I do have a measure. I, I, I do have a little bit left. She's pouring that in, then goes and brings another vessel and another vessel. And that oil just, faith makes the oil more than enough. Faith multiplies a little bit and makes it more than enough. And before you know it, man, she's still pouring that oil. Bring me another vessel. We don't have any more. <laughs> we filled everything that we borrowed. We filled it. If Jesus borrows something from you, He will fill it up before He gives it back to you. You ever had somebody borrow your car and bring it back with the gas light on? It takes a real friend to do that. <laughs> Jesus don't do that. Fill that vessel full of oil. I want to give you this challenge this morning, church. Shut the door. If you've got voices, you've got things in your life that are pulling you down, shut the door don't mean you got to be mean to them or that you got to be ugly to them. But it does mean you're going somewhere that they're not going to be allowed to go. Jesus took Peter and James and John. There are others that are called. They weren't invited to that house that day. Men of faith. This widow shut her family up in that room. And now them boys have got the testimony of a miracle. Let me tell you what God did for us. The enemy comes. He wants that younger generation. You're going to pay for that. You owe us a debt. You owe us those... Ch- What's, what, the only thing that can stop them is that oil. The power of God. The working of the Spirit. Listen, I'm closing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16... In verse 18, he said, I say unto you, Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth, whatever you close on earth, it will be closed in heaven. Whatever you loose, whatever you open on the earth, it'll be loosed in heaven. I want to challenge you today, man. What needs closing in your life? I've run out of time this morning, but man, if you just leave your ears open to everybody, the enemy will find his way to speak into your life. And how many of you, you, you've ever liked a person, you thought well of them, But then somebody comes and whispers in your ear what John did or what John said. Now every time you see John, that's all you think about is what somebody come and whispered in your ear. You know what? I may not be able to stop people from whispering and talking, but I can make sure that when they come to me, all they find is a closed door and a blocked road. I'm not going to be a part of that. That ain't going to help me. That's not going to help them. It don't matter if what you're telling me about John is true. I'm committed to help this man make it to heaven. I'm committed to help this man. If what you're saying is true, Jesus already knows what you're saying saying about him. He knows the good, the bad, and the. But yet he sent his son, son to die on that cross. So this man, why don't you get on the cross and lay your life down so that other people might have life? This is Jesus' promise. 
I'm going to build a church upon the solid rock and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Y'all, hell can't destroy this church. Hell can't stop what God wants to do in us. Whatever you close on this earth, close out the distractions. Close out what doesn't need to be there. And behind closed doors... Man, let Jesus steal. If you need to go home and close the door and have a, have a family meeting. You know, if I've missed it, man, sometimes I do. I have to go to these boys and close the door and say, I am sorry for the way I acted, for the way that I talked to you. I'm trying. Please don't give up on me, you know? There are times that we have to, there are times I have to close the door and say, Son, I see this in your life. We're not going to act that way. We're not going to do that that way. There are times that we have to do that. But you know what? It's good for us. What goes on behind the closed door? Behind the closed doors of intimacy with Jesus. I want you to speak to my heart again, Lord. I want to be close to you. I want to serve you not because I have to, but because I get to. I love you. I want to make it to the delivery room. (laughs) That means I want to see the dream that God has put, the vision that God has put in my heart. I want to see it with my eyes. You know how I know God can do it? Because I've actually got things in my hands this morning that at one time were nothing but a dream. Nothing but a prayer. The enemy will try to kill it. He'll try to destroy it. He'll try to tell you, Joseph, you were a fool for dreaming that. There was a came today though when Joseph's he he got to live that dream. He got to live that dream, brother Robert, and all them people that tried to kill the dream. Joseph was able to feed them in a time of great need. Man, not bitter. Not bitter, not callous, not mean, not hard. Why? Because there was somewhere that Joseph was able to close the door and just be in the presence of God and God was able to minister to his heart. Y'all, let's be those people. I know there's dreams in this room this morning. I know there's visions. I know there's callings. I know that you feel like religion might have drug you to a funeral. I can tell you Jesus wants to have a resurrection. He can show up when you feel like it's too late for that or it's too far gone. He ain't ever late. He's always right on time. And it could be everything that's happened in your life to then, from then until now just brought you to the point where you could walk in that room with Jesus and close the door behind you and that little bit of oil that you got left uh, in your heart. You don't know how much longer I can live. Uh, man, just start pouring it today. Pour it in empty vessels. Pour it in, in those desert and in those dry places. and Watch it be. Watch it be more. Than enough to go around. Would you stand with me this morning? Listen to this. And I'm done. Y'all, this is going to be a different season for us. I'm not trying to be charismatic, though I might get accused of it. <laughs> This might be a season of the closed door. That don't mean that we're not reaching for the world. That don't mean that we don't want the church to grow. That don't mean that we're not going to do evangelism. That doesn't mean we're not going to go to the jail. That doesn't mean that we're not going to open the door and invite whosoever in. I will tell you, it's just like Jesus. Not everybody's going to be able to go where we're going. Jesus wants it when you walk into that room of death. He didn't bring us there to cry. Talk about how bad the situation was. Jesus wants somebody that's able to bring life. Walk right into death and bring life. I believe that in this season, while these doors are closed, God's going to deal with us. This is the time. Get your relationship back with Him. I've heard people say, I want to get back close to God. What's stopping you? 
What's stopping you? Jesus bled and died and that veil in that temple was rent and now He welcomes whosoever. If you're thirsty, come. Get the waters of life freely. Man, you might be, you just got a, you just got a corner of oil in that bottle left. It's enough to get you to His feet. Just get there. Just the creditor may be knocking on the door of your heart trying to make a slave out of you. Just get into the presence of Jesus. Pour that oil. Pour that oil. Don't hold it back. Man, I'm glad that would have didn't say, I, don't, I ain't got nothing. Nothing. She said, I've got nothing but a little oil. That little bit of oil was the answer. You might be right here this morning. You're the only one in your family. And I know we've got people like that. The only one in your family that, that believes or has believed. The only one. They, they laugh at you. They mock you when you get out of bed and go to church. And you just feel like, man, I don't know how much more of this I can keep going. Pour that little bit of oil this morning. Pour it in. Church, let's believe God for together that we're in a season of closed door. We're going to get intimacy back with Jesus. Because we're going to the delivery room. And just like holding that newborn baby in your hands, we're going to stand with the true work of God in, in our hearts and around us and in this community. And Man, you wouldn't believe it if it was told you. Get it. Let's meet God there. I want to encourage you guys move if you feel like you're not getting closer what are you going to do about it if you lost something man now's the day today is the hour get it back get it back don't sit and wonder what are other people going to think about it it's behind closed doors that you escape the opinions of other people this is just about you and Jesus. Let Him touch you today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We'll pray for you. Father, touch my friend today. God, I ask you today for renewal. I ask you for restoration in this man's life. God, I pray that you draw him in closer than he's ever been before. God, that you meet him where he's at. God, whether it's a whole lot or even just a little bit left, God, multiply it. Make that cup overflow. God, I pray that you reveal Jesus to this man today in a way that he's never seen him. Let your will be done in his life. God, may our walk with you just be restored this morning. God, make it fresh. Lord, make it new. Jesus, have your way. Have your way, God. Touch this dear lady this morning, Jesus. Minister your life to her, God. Strengthen her body, Lord. Strengthen her faith, God, to believe you. Pray for your will to be done in his life. God, that you draw him closer to you. God, give him ears that hear your voice. Give him eyes that see, Lord, the narrow way that leads to life. God, give him a heart that's soft and pliable and receptive to receive from you. Father, bless Richard in this season. God, draw him in. Draw him close, God. Lord, the creditor's not going to have our family because there's oil in the house. Let it flow, Father. Let it flow. Let it flow, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Father, touch this couple today in Jesus' name. I pray for your will to be done in them, God. Lord, that they just be drawn into a, seasons of, a season of closeness, nearness unto you, God. 
Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How good to see you. Praise the Lord. I want to pray with you. Father, Father, bless Morgan this morning. God, I just pray that you would fill her to overflow. And God, with your presence, with your goodness, God, Lord, that in this season we can't stay where we are. We've got to have an increase. We've got to have more of you. God, bring us to that place of surrender. Whatever it takes, God, I want more of you. I'm willing to go behind the door. and God, let you perform the work. Do the surgery on my life. Cut out what doesn't need to be there. Whatever's killing me, God, remove it. God, fill me with life and life more abundant. God, I pray that you bless her. Bless her with a hunger and a thirst for you. Lord, that nothing else in this world ever satisfies her except for you, except for your presence, except for the reality of Jesus. God, bless this life. Bless her family. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, bless Kyle. I pray, God, that you would draw him closer, nearer. want every head bowed, eye closed. Put your hand on the person next to you this morning. And I want you to be aware that what you're touching very well could be an empty vessel. You're not able to see what's on the inside of it. That's where God That's where God chose to pour his oil. That widow woman could have said, "And I don't have enough to fill my own vessel." But by faith she poured it anyway. That's when God got involved in it. And multiplication came. You just ask the Lord to fill that person beside you today. They might have poured out all they had. You don't know. It's possible they never had anything to begin with, but... They might be empty today because they poured out everything they had. We've just walked behind the door with Jesus. He is the multiplier. Would you pray for their relationship with Christ just to be restored today? Hey, if you're standing there, you need to repent, you need to lay some things down, you need to go to that surgery room. Lord, get it out of me. If you're here and you're wounded, 
Let Him heal you this morning. God, let that place of intimacy be restored. That we want to hear Your voice. We want to know Your will. We want to be a people that you can open doors for. So we've been with you in that secret place behind the door. Lord, we want to make it to the delivery room. Not the, just the birth of a church, Lord, but the birth of a revival. Lord, the birth of an awakening, the the birth of a movement. A move of God. A wave of revival. Conviction on the streets. Families. Families all at once being washed in the blood. Families that have lived in generational darkness and bondage. Entire families being filled with the Holy Ghost. Entire families being baptized in the water. Serving you. Everything being changed. Lord, drug addicts. Meth addicts. Crack addicts. Drug dealers. Being driven to the feet of Jesus. And becoming evangelists. Becoming prayer warriors. Becoming leaders of a new movement. Shurabahi Yandarabohushi Turahi. Jesus. 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 tell you this this as you get close to him something's going to come out of you something good you know behind closed doors You can be who you really are. No masking, no faking, no pretending. But really, behind closed doors, that is who you are. Whether you like that person or not, that's who you are. If that's a bad thing for you this morning, Jesus loves you. The you that nobody knows. And it's behind closed doors that He changes you. Let's don't get caught in the place of pretending, y'all. I don't I don't want to preach to a half empty church. But if that's where Jesus has to take me for me to learn what He has for my life. I will go there. We don't have anything to prove to anybody. Let's be who God called us to be. And in the pursuit of it, there'll be some great things come out of it.
my God sticks his finger in my face and said, that's you. I was listening to a Bible study last night at home. That same finger was in my face again. I've been trying to run out of here all morning. But God woke me up this morning. He said, if that boy's going to know me, you have to know me. I'm tired of running. I don't know what to do. I want to surrender my life to God. I'm tired of running. Oh, come on, church. Ah, 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 so shit. In the day. <laughs> oh, God. Break him, Lord. Let's take him restore. Renew, Lord. Let the fruit come from this. Prune the tree, Lord, so that good fruit can come. Da, 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 da. Restore our brother, Lord. We love him, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for the convicting power of the Lord. What Jesus wants is a surrendered life. So the Bible says, offer yourself to Him. Not your stuff, but yourself. Not your words, but your heart. I believe good fruit's going to come out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Nathan reminds me of Peter in the scriptures. That sometimes he'd step out and sometimes he'd bite off more than he can chew like we all do. I can tell you what he never did. He never quit. 
And any time he tried to run, Jesus would always come get him. And eventually the words that came from that man's mouth led a multitude to the feet of Jesus. And I believe God's going to do that. Praise the Lord. Praise God. just glad for the freedom that we have we don't have to pretend to be we can drop the mask we can know it's just one more time y'all I'm not sure what to do in this moment but I don't think the Lord's done You just pray. You know, how many times do we we'll hear a sermon, then we run right out of here and forget it. God did something in our heart. An hour later, we forgot it. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you this morning for your spirit. Thank you for the way that you move. Thank you for the lives that you touch. God, we just receive in faith today that you have more for us. You're not finished with us. God, help us to see even even when it looks like you're subtracting and you're taking people away that you're really adding to. Lord, we want to be among those that can walk into dead situations and bring life. Be able to walk into dead churches and bring life. God, to be able to find people that have laid down and give up and bring life to them. Because the living one, the way, the truth, and the life lives on the inside of us. The Word says the first Adam was a living soul, but the second was a quickening spirit. Oh, you're able to give life to what is dead. That's what your Word does. That's what your Gospel does. That's what your spirit, your presence. That's, nobody ever died in the presence of Jesus. I know if we stay there, we will not be dead people. Thank you, Lord, for filling these vessels this morning. God, I pray they wind up empty again because we poured it all out. And we just learned to keep coming to that fountain time and time again. Fill me up so I can pour it out. We love you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Okay, if you and Lauren will get in the fr- in front down here. I won't pour water on your head, I promise. We're going to present y'all with this card for y'all's anniversary. And there is, we have a gift certificate to Anthony's. Yes. I didn't do it. The church did it for y'all. It's not for me. Just Joshin. But we, we love y'all. And we care, we care so much for y'all. I myself and my family are so grateful for y'all. Little did I know, a year and a half, a year or so ago, that John and I were both praying at the same time. I did not know that. I've been thinking about that here lately, that I was praying, and John was praying at the same time for us, for the Lord to lead us to a church that he wanted us to be in and to mature us as a family and to grow us. And he led us here. And I am very grateful so much 
And if it hadn't been for y'all, the Lord putting y'all together, marrying y'all, the Lord, y'all getting married, and birthing this in y'all, where would we be? Where would all of us be? All of us be. And look at what y'all have done and sticking it together through the hard times and the bad times and the good times and being faithful to one another. None of us would have what we have now. And we are so grateful and we love y'all so much. So church, if y'all would get around them and let's pray for them. Father, I thank you so much for Luke and Lauren, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you will continue to bless them and that you will grow them and prosper them, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you will just just be with them and you will anoint them and you will just grow them, Lord. Just, just continue, Lord, to do in them what you are doing in them, and you will just guide them and touch them, Lord, in such mighty ways that you will grow their marriage in you, grow their family in you, Lord God, and you will just just bless this church, Lord, in such a mighty way. And I am thankful, Lord, for this church, Lord, in 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 what you've done for us and what you've done is in this church family. And I thank you for this family and my family. Family, what you've done, Lord, and I, I'm, I just pray, Father, that you will just bless us and 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 continue to fill our vessels, Lord. And I, I just ask these things in your blessed and holy name, Amen.